Betsy and Thomas here for the American Intelligence Media. Today we're decoding the Trump tweets of September 18th, 2018. But you know, before we get started, I had wanted to make sure that you talk a little bit about the closing of these observatories. And I also wanted you to talk about China because um, I hear you in the conclave talking about these two things quite a bit, but I don't think we've done an audio on it. And then lo and behold, I look at the tweets today and POTUS has given you a segue right into that. So we will get to that, but I wanted listeners to know right up front, we're going to be talking about those two important subjects. Yes, Betsy, it's... uh an absolute thrill to be here uh, decoding tea drops. Um, we said that we were going to address the solar observatory phenomena that has happened, but we forgot to. So I made, no, it's just we've been made, so busy. I made one tiny reference to it, and so someone did actually send me a message saying, "Would you please address that? Because you said you're going to, and people want to know because they're going crazy for that." Should I address that now? No, let's let's get right into the tweets, and then we'll, and then when uh, it's appropriate, we'll jump into it. Okay, the first one is, and it is a quote from Congressman Peter King. What will be disclosed is that there was no basis for these FISA warrants, that the important information was kept from the court. There's going to be a disproportionate influence of the fake dossier. Basically, you have a counterterrorism tool used to spy on a presidential campaign, which is unprecedented in our history. Then Trump adds, really bad things were happening, but they are now being exposed. Big stuff. He can't say coup d'etat, Soros color revolution. Why can't can't. he? Why can't he just say? Because they'll turn him off like Alex Jones, okay? They'll just simply say conspiracy theory, though they invented the concept. So when he says really bad things were happening, (laughs) big stuff, he's talking about this is the real deal. With Bruce Orr, with him declassifying this information, the Bruce Orr testimony was the most damnable so far. He basically squealed to try to keep his wife and him out of trouble. But all he did was prove what a fool he was because he revealed all kinds of things that got him in trouble. So, still, no insinuation of indictment against Bruce Orr. So, of course, Trump has to declassify these things. And what's going to be in them? There's going to be a number of things in them. We've already told you what's in them. It proves the coup d'etat. It proves that the coup d'etat was being ran out of the Democratic National Committee, John Podesta, Hillary Clinton being paid by George Soros. It's going to prove that Comey and his little bunk buddies there in the FBI and Peter Strzok in particular and Lisa Page, they were in on a conspiracy from the beginning and I just want to point out that uh, Peter King is incorrect to say that this was a counterterrorism action. No, it was a counterintelligence action. It was a CIA counterintelligence operation. It was never an investigation. Well, that's probably because Congressman Peter King is not reading Truth News headlines on a daily basis and listening to our audios. If he were, he'd be a lot smarter than this, and so would. I, I just listened to, and I won't name the network, I won't beat them up, but you know, they're supposed to be all fair and balanced, and they're talking about this situation, saying Comey could get 10 years for this. And I'm like, really? You people don't see that this was treason? Ten years? Yeah. No. How about uh, the sentence of treason, depending upon who you are and how the circumstances came to be, can be death. So let's go back a bit. The um, When it says here, and it makes a reference to the fake dossier, don't forget that Comey had already completely poo-pooed this document when he gave the They say two-page executive summary. It was one page. The first page was blank. And all it said was, it is salacious and it is unverified, Mr. President. And that's all that was reported to him. Now imagine that. On the same day, at the same time, they were releasing it to BuzzFeed, to CNN, to Washington Post, to the New York Times and Wall Street Journal and Mother Jones, And they were all releasing the information because that was the trigger. When Comey gave the report to Trump, oh, then it was no longer a national security issue because he had announced that he was giving it to Trump. You see? First off, you can't do that. How about executive privilege? Why would they have been in this investigation, which included Trump, without informing Trump? Only one reason, and one reason alone. And they want to say that it's the FISA court that protected them. No, it is not the FISA court that protected them. It was Peter Strzok. 
Peter Strzok as a section chief of the CIA running a counterintelligence operation under national security issues, which we told you from the beginning is the way that it was running, those are ran because a national security letter was written and signed. What that means is it's the same thing that had to happen for the FISA court, Title I permission for the warrant on Carter Page, which meant that Comey himself, whether national security letter written by Peter Strzok or the FISA warrant written by a bunch of nonsense, it's the same group who was Comey's bunk buddies. It's the same thing. Comey had to swear as only one person can do this. And he had to swear that Carter Page was a Russian spy. Can't swear that because he was actually an American asset working against Russians. And then he was used as a dupe to enter into the Trump campaign. And now, of course, Carter Page would love to be represented by uh, Joe DiGenova because why? He's going to win any case he has, especially once these FISA court documents are unredacted, those pages they're talking about, because they're going to demonstrate that they did not, exactly what he says here, they did not say who paid for it. They did not say it was opposition research. They did not say foreigners were involved. They did not say the FBI, CIA, the State Department, and Department of Justice paid Stephen Halper and other criminals, foreign agents, attacking our election. We paid them. Imagine that. When, when this, the truth of it comes out, which we've known the truth for quite some time, for a variety of reasons, but as the truth is filtering through, especially with the new page and struck text messages that are saying that there was a leak factory, there was a leak, I call it the institutionalized leaks, this was a leak factory, folks. This was constructed to manipulate the election, which is a national security violation and an attack, and it's a violation of every FBI, DOJ, Department of State, any of those people, they took vows, NSA, CIA, they broke their vows, which says that they are committing treason and they know it. Well, um, before you go on, tell me about Comey and whether or not he's been given full immunity, and does that factor in? It's just like John and Larry Tony Podesta, excuse me, I was calling Larry, John and Tony Podesta. They were questioned by Robert Mueller and given complete immunity to everything they were questioned about. So they were questioned about whether they had signed up as foreign agents, and they said no. Oh, they have immunity, don't worry. They signed up after the fact. As a matter of fact, after Mueller Mueller questioned them with his special counsel, the very next day they were allowed to go back and retroactively sign up as basically acting for a foreign nation or basically foreign actors working for a foreign nation as a lobbyist and representing them. And now they made RT and Sputnik do that because they said that was the Russian influence in the election in 2016. Now, just a few days ago, they said they're going to make two Chinese news agencies in America sign up as foreign agents. but, 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 But what about Comey's immunity? Well, Comey had to have been given immunity because... We don't hear anything about him ever being questioned. And then nothing happens. We know that the inspector general was looking for politicalization between the FBI and the DOJ. Why didn't Comey come up? Hello? Comey was the worst politicalization element. And yes, he wasn't necessarily still working at the time that Michael Horowitz started his investigation into that. So you can give immunity to someone who's committed treason? Absolutely. They gave it to Imran Awan. Who, complete who's immunity. Who's the they that did this? Jeff Sessions. Oh, my goodness. How can he give immunity to crimes against the state? Well, well, he gave it to Imran Awan, but uh, it was uh, Rod Rosenstein, Rat Roden, Rodenstein, who gave it to uh, the ability for Mueller to give that uh, immunity to Comey, even when Comey had used his factory leaker, uh, uh, Daniel Richmond, to leak the information that got the special counsel appointed. This is unprecedented. And so what Nunes and the others who've read these things have said is this is going to be much bigger than the Nunes memo. Remember, the Nunes memo was what started all of this. And it was because Nunes had been told that the unmasking had happened in the White House skiff 
And that started the ball rolling. Then he got kicked out for ethics questions for a moment, brought back, and Nunes has been on the ball ever since, and he's not letting up. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. The Bruce Orr uh, behind closed doors testimony, that will sink many boats. The revealing of the particular FISA warrant that was submitted shows that Christopher Steele, who had already been fired by the FBI, remember he was hired by the FBI to work against Trump, and he was paid by Fusion GPS, who got the money from Perkins Coie, who got the money from the Democratic National Committee. I mean, come on, this is unbelievable. But anyway, when he got fired, Christopher Steele got fired, why? He went too far, and he was making copies available to people in the press. He was only supposed to use this as a rumor mill, as an October surprise, to take down Trump at the last minute, and nothing would ever be proven, okay? That's why only afterwards, when they knew that Trump was going to win, that's why in late, late October, they went for the FISA warrant as an insurance policy. Why? They don't usually, and I told you, the Inspector General investigation of the FISA court said that Comey had not pulled one single FISA court warrant. He just writes national security letters or does whatever he wants and surveils everyone, everyone. And so he didn't need one. He only needed that for this moment now. They actually believe that that FISA court warrant is going to get them out of the trouble they're in because, and we told you this from the beginning, they did not use that FISA court warrant for what it was supposed to be used for. That's the insurance policy. So what do we know now? Oh, this is this is the topper of all toppers. There was no hearing. For the four FISA court warrants, Title I against Carter Page, which basically means complete surveillance of Trump, which actually started in March of 2016, so it's a lie that they needed that October 2016 FISA court warrant. No, they did not. They were already surveilling Trump completely. That was their insurance policy to go for what? Making sure he didn't get inaugurated. They wanted. They were attacking him as president-elect. And then once the inauguration happened, you saw Susan Rice write her exoneration, her alibi, saying it was Obama directed the whole thing, according to what Susan Rice has said, including... The, the dossier, which we also know because Tr- uh, Page and Strzok said it in their messages oh. back and forth that the president was directing the whole thing. Obama was directing it. And when you talk about Page and Strzok, when those texts are released, I can't wait to see all the lovey-dovey talk between them. Because, you know, I've always said, are they really lovers or are they using that as an excuse to hide the big crimes? Well, I think right now. Michael Horowitz knows that his first IG report that indicted no one, he was investigating the politicalization of the FBI and DOJ, which couldn't have been any more politicized or any more biased or any more partisan. It could not have been. They were basically extensions of Hillary's campaign. And they were working against Trump 24-7, as we see from all the evidence that's being revealed. So in the end, what's going to happen we have to sit back and eat the popcorn and watch the show. We, the, the conclave is so convinced that over time that this will actually undo Mueller himself because the immunity given to some of these people will have to be withdrawn in the next special council investigation, which will be an independent council. And it will be quite independent of the criminal fake justice, Department of Justice. It will have to be really one that borders on a military tribunal because this is, in fact, a coup d'etat. And it's an active coup d'etat. So Mr. King was wrong to call it counterterrorism. Well, maybe he's part of the coup d'etat. I mean, you know, you have to understand it when Congress people and media people don't report the full truth, like how come they're not calling out yet that all these people you named are operatives of the senior executive service. See, they just stop short so you don't ever really know the full truth. That's correct, because you won't hear anyone talking about the senior executive service, but you will see their results, and the results are an administrative class that is the status quo, that makes sure that the bureaucracy never changes. 
even the exposure of the deep state by what's it called veritas well that's one thing i just mm-hmm. want to put it this way james o'keefe is out with his new things where he's going to expose the deep state shadow government it's very exciting when you listen to it i listened to the first one today and okay that's fine but is he going to be just another kind of controlled opposition that stops short from going all the way to naming senior executive service we'll wait and see but the first video did not tell me that they're scratching the surface, just like what's going to happen with the released declassified documents will only be the beginning. We need to go deeper. Let's go to the fact that we now know that Hillary Clinton was sending courtesy copies of all 700,000 of the emails that were on the Wiener laptop. So when they went to Huma's laptop, they were being sent to China also. Okay, So why isn't that going into? That should be part of of what we're talking about here. You're talking about meddling in the election and collusion with foreign governments. It was collusion with China. Remember, she is practically Chinese. She sits on the Walmart board as a paid position, which got made China our number one manufacturer, just through Walmart alone. But Hillary's in on all of it. So we have showed that Hillary has these digital keys through the public key infrastructure. And she can do all of these things and she doesn't care because she thought that she was completely immune and that she could surveil um, and attack anyone that she wants. Well, what's really going on is China is our massive enemy and we are at war with them and we have been at war with them with the help of the Clintons since they, the Clintons helped China get into the World Trade Organization. And what are they really after China? Oh, how about the fact that China and Russia have broken the sanctions with North Korea blatantly, and they had previously broken them with Iran. Why? Because it's a lie. North Korea is not independent. It is a Chinese vassal. And that's the reason that the talks are being slowed down, because every time the crazy, dictatorial, totalitarian President Xi of China speaks with Kim Jong-un, things go backwards. He wants those rare earth minerals in North Korea, but more than that, he wants the nuclear threat to be the megaphone to basically threaten the world. And China now is just about one inch away from blowing it completely with us, and then we won't need any tariffs because we simply won't do business with them again. China says that if you acknowledge Taiwan, even that it exists, they're not going to do any business with you. Well, (laughs) sorry, America acknowledges Taiwan, and recently did it in a major way, and it ticked off dictator Chi so much that he is ready to basically be kicked out by his own people, which I did not think was possible after the power that they gave him in the last uh, five-year planning uh, of the of the committee, of the Central Committee. So, folks, don't worry about tariffs with China. We should do no business with China, simply because of their lack of uh, human rights in their country. Why are we doing any business? Why are they most Let's favored move. nation trading status? Why? They shouldn't be. Let's move into these tweets about China, okay? <laughs> because uh, this might also be a segue into looking at those observatories. China has openly stated that they are actively trying to impact and change our election by attacking our farmers, ranchers, and industrial workers because of their loyalty to me. What China does not understand is that these people are great patriots and fully understand that China has been taking advantage of the United States on trade for many years. They also know that I am the one that knows how to stop it. There will be great and fast economic retaliation against China if our farmers, ranchers, and or industrial workers are targeted. Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton not only gave all of our IP to China, they gave it to Russia. They, they blatantly gave it to Russia, but under the table they gave it to China. And this is one of the biggest problems of all, because the greatest amount of money now and in the future is based upon patents and intellectual property and on the trade secrets of the good people who create those patents, which has, of course, been taken over by Serco and the Brits. And, of course, we know that, you know... And I always remind people, if you're an innovator, an entrepreneur out there, and you think that your great idea is going to be protected by the U.S. Patent Office, really, for now, it's the last place you want to go because it's run by Serco, and it's all foreigners. We are in a full-on war with China. I don't know anybody else until recently who says that. But now you get to see many people economically coming out saying, Hey, wait a second, we're in a war with China. (laughs) Yeah, 
because China's stock market is fake. Their currency is fake. Their, why they were ever allowed into the International Monetary Fund it should be illegal. They should have never been allowed into the World Trade Organization. And they're skirting around with the World Bank. Okay, what is going on? Any minute they're going to be doing derivatives, okay? And when that happens, it's all lost for China. Here's what's going to happen to China. Either they come to zero tariffs or Trump is going to collapse their economy, exactly as he's doing to Iran, North Korea, and Turkey. Why? You don't mess with President Trump because he is working on economics. He's not working on ideologies, fake ideologies of liars like Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton <coughs> who preach these ideologies as virtual sig virtue signaling and then go out and do the opposite. Four million refugees during Obama's time have come to this country from countries that Obama bombed ruthlessly. Think of that. So we bomb a country, make them our enemies, make their people suffer, kill their families, and then we bring them to America as our friends. This is who Obama was. Now, with China, what did Obama do? He allowed all the IP to be stolen. He allowed every bit of intellectual property to be stolen. He allowed the Chinese to hack into everything. And then he always called Dmitry Alperovitch to say, who did it? And Dmitry would say, it was the Iranians, it was the Syrians, it was the North Koreans, it was the Russians, it was anybody but China. And at one time that he blamed it on China, he was wrong, actually. And that was just to try to protect the real villains. Now, why did Obama only use one company, CrowdStrike, for the last five years of his administration to cover up all the cyber crimes? And where were the cyber crimes really happening? China. What is China doing with the fact that they provided us with 65% of our manufacturing goods for uh, since Bill Clinton came to power? They saved it all up, and they buy everything in America they can, secretly, and then they try to steal the IP, even here in America, through American companies. They're trying to buy Hollywood because of its influence. They're trying to buy news agencies because of their influence. And the worst thing they're doing is, is if you do not believe in the one belt, one road idea of totalitarian dictator Xi, and he has purchased huge resources in your countries, look at all the countries that he's purchased from. He has now moved his soldiers over there to protect their interests. In other words, he is going to try to steal what he bought and paid for with U.S. dollars because of the fake, out-of-balance trade deals with China. Now, don't worry, folks. This happened before. Does anybody remember when this happened with Japan? And overnight, Japan, who was literally buying up the concessions for all of our national parks, they were buying every speck of land they could. They bought into the stock market massively. They had taken the money from manufacturing, especially IT manufacturing. And what did they do with it? They bought America. And then what happened? We crushed them. We crushed them with a currency, with their currency. We crushed them with their investments here. We simply turned the tables on them and we let our dollar go to nothing. And so what they had bought was worth nothing. And then we put pressure on them and they created new laws in their country for inheritance and they collapsed. Same thing's going to happen with China, but it's going to be their stock market that's going to collapse. It's going to be their IT market. That, sorry, sorry, Eric Schmidt. Sorry, Henry Kissinger. But China is going to collapse under President Trump if they do not go to zero tariffs, so period. China... Um, right now is our number one enemy, excuse me, our number one enemy is sitting there right there in Washington, D.C., and then there's China nipping at our heels. Um, what's the relationship to China and these observatories? I suspect one of a few things, and I, when you say UFOs, because people saw somebody who took a picture of a UFO, which was simply a glare on their camera, because you can't use your cell phone to do a good picture of <laughs> the sun. Anyone would know that. And those little blips over there, probably because she fried her camera. Well, let's not speculate on that. Let's just get to what you I'm just think. saying that people are saying that the mothership has arrived on the sun, and that's why the solar observatories went out, because it's a massive UFO incursion into our environment. Incorrect. But I like the mothership story. The mothership's been here. The, the, the beings who come from other places do not need tin cans to ride in to get here. If they are traversing 
light years, they had the capacity to also uh, basically conquer the physicality of space, the imagination and the appearance of physicality of space. Anyway, the point is, it is not an accident that on the exact same day that all the solar observatories closed down voluntarily, they were not closed down by the FBI and a Black Hawk helicopter did not swoop down and close Alamogordo or any place else. I've been to those places. And the solar observatories on on, on uh, Mauna Loa, I've been there. I've seen these places and I uh, really, I pay a lot of attention to the sun. And let me tell well, you. How do you know the Black Hawks didn't fly down on them? Because the people who came out of the solar observatories around the world said that they did it vol- voluntarily because they had to have a software update. That would mean that they found out that China have has the entire IP for solar observatories and probably can control them. This is what China is doing. China launched... Well, why would we send the FBI in? They can't find crime even under their own roof. How are they expected to find anything under the observatories? Because they said the FBI went in to shut them down. They were asked to come in Why would you FBI. ask the FBI to come in? Well, for the same reason that supposedly when the DNC was hacked, they asked the FBI to come in, but then they refused to let them come in. So I the, don't know. It's just crazy stuff because I don't see any results from the FBI. No. All I see is total, complete corruption. The only indictments we're seeing are against the non-shadow government. Are you seeing the FBI rounding up any bad guys? Nope. Not None. the shadow government, not SES members. Nope, 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 nope. 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 Okay. But that's okay because it's getting ready to crack open. So on the 13th, the Porter Solar Satellite reached within the outer parameters, outer perimeter of the um, sun. It's touted to ha- to be the first satellite that's going to touch the sun. They're going to crash it into the sun after they go around the sun three times. That's ludicrous. Okay, this is absurd. They already put a satellite into onto the surface of the sun and found that the surface of the sun was not 10,000 degrees, Fahrenheit and keeps getting hotter the further you go. No, they found that the solar flares can reach the highest temperatures. And so then they tried to say that the Porter Solar Satellite can withstand temperatures of 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, that's complete silliness. Because in the, the now it is true that we are at the Maunder, uh low. We are at the lowest point of solar flares and solar sunspots that we have been in in quite a long time. And that is what's causing our weather pattern shifts. And there are no sunspots now. The last time they did this, they literally tried to crash the satellite into a sunspot and they missed, but they crashed it into the surface of the sun and they found out that it was only 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, completely opposite of what they believed. So what I'm suggesting is one of three things. Either we found out that the Chinese have completely taken over all the solar observatories so that they can have that data and analyze it without really participating as a um, as a international participant. And also, I'm going to explain something else that is going to be shocking to you, but it's a fact. And secondly, at the exact moment that we should have been observing the Porter Solar Satellite, all the solar observatories in the world go out, no, wrong. Can we actually fly 430,000 miles an hour and fly this satellite there as fast as we said that we could? Uh, no, we cannot. How can you get it through the Van Allen belt? This is the point. It's it's hotter than 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit in our, in our own atmosphere as it leaves. And people who say, well, they go out through the North Pole. No, they don't. Just no, they don't. Just a NASA lie. It's NASA lies. Like you hear Elon Musk say that he can get to Mars now oh in a speck of the time that we've always believed we could because somehow, magically, this satellite and Elon Musk's satellites, they go faster than we've ever gone before. But here's the point. It is not an accident that whatever vehicle is there taking the pictures of the sun, and I doubt that it's that satellite because that satellite is not shielded to even withstand the outer perimeters of the sun, let alone if they encountered a coronal mass ejection, which they did, by the way. And that's what I believe they hid. I believe that they hid the fact that we are now in unprecedented times. We're seeing the largest coronal mass ejections we've ever seen in solar history. 
And uh, recently, one of them came at the earth, and they said, if this ever happens, it could be the end of the earth. Well, mm, not much happened. You didn't even hear about it. It happened just recently, within the last month. So what's going on? Well, as this other solar uh, uh, solar mass ejection, um, coronal mass ejection, excuse me, CME, as when it was coming at the Porter satellite, it would have been receiving fantastic transmissions now, wouldn't it? Uh, but we have none. And all of a sudden, any ability that we have to get a very close picture, a view of it, which is what is necessary, you have to block out the sun with the solar observatory um, um, telescope or and the other devices they use. Because you can't look straight at the sun. So why aren't they getting good readings off of this? And why did that happen at the exact moment that it reached the area, the outer parameter of the sun when it was beginning to take pictures? That's what's going on, folks. One of a few things. That's not the satellite they say it is. And or, and that's why they don't want anyone to take pictures of it. Because that is our satellite. Okay? It's a military satellite. And... It probably is something they don't want anyone to take a picture of. So I suggest to you that you are not going to be seeing any pictures of the Porter Solar Satellite because it is not what they say it is well, simply you, because of this coincidence. Then if you wanted to distract people from looking at the real problem, you'd uh, send the FBI in because that's a hot topic for everybody to talk about and the conspiracy theories will thunder off. Or you might... Uh, release some pictures that look like a mothership and a fleet coming in. And, you know, I just don't believe this whole NASA thing anyway, because frankly, I don't see any evidence that we ever went to the moon. And until I see something solid, all of NASA in my book is smoke and mirrors. But they steal my tax dollars. Oh, huge amounts. All right. And so it we- all, now it goes to Elon Musk. Shall we move on? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we have a happy birthday to the United States Air Force. There's a clip in there. If you want to go and see that, you can look at the link that's in the description box. And then we have a tweet about Florence. Right now, everybody is saying what a great job we are doing with Hurricane Florence, and they are 100% correct. But don't be fooled. At some point in the near future, the Democrats will start ranting that FEMA, our military, and our first responders who are all unbelievable, are a disaster and not doing a good job. This will be a total lie, but that's what they do, and everybody knows it. And that's why they're going to lose. It's like the accusations that Trump personally went there and just killed those Puerto Ricans. Well, now it's going to be Trump killed everyone in the way of Florence. It was that it changed the name from Florence to Donald. He killed them personally. Yes, but if you look at what he's releasing through his tweets... It's a news agency, folks. It's beautiful. It's what I'm going to call it the um, the Patriot News Agency, the Trump Truth Network, the, I don't know. It's got to be given a great name because it's showing you the truth. You don't need to go anywhere else. And if anything happens on any other stations, including that one that's fair and balanced, don't worry. It's going to be posted there. Like well, I'm the, just saying fair and balanced. They, they're they just keeping you from going all the way. That's all I'm saying. But they do a good job up to a point, and then they just stop. And that's why he posts things from them all the time, like the Maria. Mm-hmm. Oh. It gives him a sound bite for the point he's trying to make. But look, don't count on these uh, any of these corporate propaganda media sites to take you all the way. The next uh, tweet is about the Coast Guard, uh, our great Coast Guard, for doing such a tremendous job, thousands of lives being saved. And if you go in, you'll see a picture of a helicopter doing stuff. And I just want to thank POTUS for recognizing the Coast Guard, as we have family member who serves in the Coast Guard who's very proud of his work there. Thank you so much. And I want to thank Franz. Thank you, Franz, for the call and for giving us such encouragement. And I just want to say that I, too, like Betsy, support uh, the Coast Guard. They're the, they are the best. They're the best. They, all they, they don't create war. They just help people. And they put their lives on the line for it. They're like firemen. They're like police officers. And These it's so people important to put have their lives them. on the line. Because our borders also include the borders that are watered. And we have to keep those safe and secure. And our soldiers and our ICE, our immigration and customs uh, enforcement. Okay, Look at what the Democrats do say. No ICE, no border, no Trump and op, no Trump economics, no laws, 
and essentially no America. They would simply dissolve America as long as that meant that they get to stay on Capitol Hill and keep getting their slush funds through their offshore accounts, their lobbying funds to keep their politics going, and then their special accounts like the John McCain Institute, $11 million just in the last year before he supposedly died. People just pouring money in there from Saudi Arabia, from Russia, you name it. Nothing ever happens to them. So that political class, they really got to go. Let's wrap it up today with the final tweet of today, because I'm sure there'll be more tomorrow. Today, I, lo- I took action to strengthen our nation's defenses against biological threats. For the first time in history, the federal government has a national biodefense strategy to address the full range of biological threats. Remembering that many of those biological threats are created at Fort Dix in the, bi- uh, in the biological warfare section. And many of the things like anthrax, why do you think there's military-grade anthrax? Well, why did we ever create military-grade anthrax? And why does the CDC produce the vaccines that harm our children? And why do we still have glyphosates being poured on our crops that get into the air? And knock on wood, I haven't seen chemtrails here in a week. But, you know, the, the, the what's being sprayed and how Americans are being poisoned is just huge. If people look closely into the CDC, they will find out that they create the vaccines and they have the patents on them and they make money as a private corporation. Everyone's going to tell you the CDC is the government. No, they're not. They're a private corporation and they make huge amounts of money off of vaccines. And there are laws that protect them. There's a thing called the vaccine court. If you want to bring a charge against a vaccine that has harmed your child, you can't. There's laws that say you can't. So the biodefense strategy, national biodefense strategy, notice it's not military. Notice that Trump has already declared war upon the pharmaceutical companies and some of them who have raised their prices as much as 2,000% from one minute to the next on a certain drug. He has warned them that he's coming after them. That's what this is. This is his attack against Big Pharma. It is his attack against the CDC and against the weaponized criminal enemy of America, Monsanto slash bear.